My name is Terence Ranganai. And I'm from Zimbabwe. What I'm about to share is my personal lifetime story. But it's more than that. It's a warning to everyone around the world. This is what is happening. This is what they have planned against you. This is not just about what happened to me. It's about a global trip. One that targets people regardless of where they live. It's a trip so cunning and dangerous that everyone can fall victim to it without even realizing. At the end of this story, I'll explain the sinister tools used in this trip, jewelries and items that seem harmless, but connect people to marine spirits, powerful forces that can destroy lives. Stay with me until end because this is something you need to know. Growing up in Zimbabwe, life was never easy but I'd always been resilient. However, when I fell seriously ill with a disease that was beyond the capacity of our local hospitals, I knew I had to seek help anywhere. Zimbabwe is a beautiful country, but its medical system doesn't always have the resources to treat every illness. My family and I decided that my best chance for survival lay in South Africa, a country known for its advanced health care. When I arrived in South Africa, I was filled with both hope and fear. Would the doctors be able to help me? Would I survive? The disease has taken so much from me already. But after weeks of treatment, something miraculous happened. I was cured. The doctors worked tirelessly and I finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel. The disease that had once seemed like a death sentence was gone. After my recovery, I made a decision that would change the course of my life. Instead of returning home, I decided to stay in South Africa. It wasn't an easy choice, but I felt that staying would give me opportunities I couldn't find back home. I started to rebuild my life, grateful for a second chance at living. But as I would later learn, not every opportunity is what it seems. Sometimes what looks like a blessing can actually be a curse in disguise. One Sunday, as I was leaving the hospital after a routine checkup, a man approached me. He seemed friendly and polite, someone you won't think twice about trusting. Hello, my brother, he greeted with me a warm smile. Are you Terence? Yes, that's me, I replied, wondering how he knew my name. I have heard about your story, he said. Your recovery is truly inspiring. We need people like you in the world. People who can give others hope. How would you like to travel to Ghana and work at a medical center? His words were like music to my eyes. The idea of inspiring others, of using my experience to help people, was something I couldn't resist. He explained that the job would involve sharing my story, teaching people about resilience, and recovery it sounded perfect almost too good to be true but i didn't know then that this man was leading me into a trip excited and eager i boarded in a plane to ghana imagine imagining the good i could do there but when i arrived immediately sensed that something was wrong instead of being taken to a hospital or a medical center i was taken to a shrine at first i thought there must be some mistake where is the medical center? Asked a people who greeted me. They laughed softly as if I didn't trust the bigger picture. You see, one of them said, leading me into this shrine. It was a dark place. It was a dark place. Over the next few weeks, I learned the truth about the shrine. It wasn't just a religious place. It was the headquarters of a vast network that spanned Africa and Asia. They had agents nearly every country, people who worked secretly to recruit others into their dark schemes. Their tools, jewelries made from a certain tree seed in Ghana, a tree seed that was cased and connected to marine spirits. The jewelries, including shambales, necklaces, wristbands, and other accessories. These items were not just fashion pieces. They are used to trap people. So if you see some of these shambles, never trust the people. Never trust the people. The shrine leaders explained their plan to me. They wanted to train me 
to turn me into one of their agents, my road to go back to Zimbabwe or even other countries and recruit more people. They saw me as a valuable asset because of my story and the trust people would place in me. For six months, I stayed at the shrine undergoing tra training. They taught me how to manipulate people, how to sell the jewelries without revealing its true purpose. But deep down, I knew I couldn't do it. I couldn't be a part of something so evil, something that was destroying lives. During this time, I saw things that still hurt me. I saw people who had won the jewelries and lost everything. Their marriages, their children, even their health. The marine spirits were relentless. And once they had a hold on someone, it was almost impossible to break free. When I was finally assigned to go to Botswana, I couldn't take it anymore. I decided to confess everything. I told the shrine leaders that I couldn't be part of their network that I wanted out. But leaving wasn't that simple. The moment I confessed, something happened to me when I was in Botswana. It was uh, as if an invisible force took away my ability to speak. I lost my voice completely. And to this day, I never been able to speak again. It was there way of punishing me now i want to warn you about the beads the jewelry that these agents are spreading around the world these items may look harmless even beautiful but they are deeply dangerous once you wear them you become spiritually tied to marine spirits these spirits can wreak havoc in your life they can make it impossible for you to marry or have children they can bring endless misfortune destroying everything you have worked for and the worst part, most people don't even realize what's happened to them. I share my story not to scare you, but to protect you. Be careful about these things you buy and wear, especially jewelers that come with no clear origin. If someone offers you an opportunity that seems too good to be true, question it. And this is, the world is full of traps, but with this awareness and caution, you can avoid their stay vigilant and protect yourself. That seed is black with red spots and black spots, two black spots on each seed, but it's it's have a red spots all over. Be very careful some of these shambles you buy. Thank you so much, my brother, for sharing such a helpful story. You want us, you want us. Ladies and gentlemen, like I always told you, you need to pray before buying some of these things. As to you, my brother, the first important thing is to see God's guidance in decisions. Example, uh, in the Bible, Joshua chapter 19, verse 14 to 15, the Israelites failed to see God's counsel before making a, a threat with the Gabionites and were deceived. Before accepting offers or making life-changing decisions, pray and seek wisdom from God. Trust that he will reveal any hidden dangers. Trust that. Another important thing, my brother, is discernment of spirits. For example, first in 1 first John Chapter 4, verse 1. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. If something feels spiritually off, like the shrine you entered, trust that uneasy. Ask for discernment and seek advice from a pastor or a spiritual mentor. Another very important thing is avoid idolatry or awkward practices. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 to 12, God strictly forbids involvement with sorcery, divination, or any form of awkward practices. Avoid wearing or using objects like the cased jewelries if you, you don't know their spiritual significance. Ensure every item you wear aligns with God's word. Another important thing is deliverance through Christ. For example, in Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 20, Jesus delivers a man possessed by a legion of spirits. If you have been spiritually entangled, seek deliverance through prayer, fasting, and support from a church that understands spiritual welfare, faithfulness in trials. 
faithfulness in trials. Job chapter 1 verse 20 to 22, Job remained faithful despite several trials. Despite losing your voice and facing spiritual attacks, continue trusting God to work all things for your good. Yes, my brother. Spiritual descent, uh, deception through materialism. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, you can't, you cannot save both God and money. <laughs> you cannot save both God and money. Many people are lured into schemes promising wealth or success, but lose their spiritual integrity in the process, much like uh, the network you encountered. And we have learned the, 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 the danger of unavoided opportunities. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean, and lean not on your own understanding. Yes, job offers opportunities that seem perfect may have hidden agendas. Always clarify their source or pray for clarity. Pray for that clarity. We have learned that the power of, of spirit, have, there is power of spiritual objects. Acts chapter 19, verse 19. People in Ephesus bend their sorcery scrolls to break free from spiritual bondage. Items like cased jewelers can spiritually bind people, leading to misfortunes or broken relationships. Destroy such objects to break their power. The cost of standing for truth, we have learned that. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, Shadrach, Mishan, and Abednego refused to bow to the idol, risking death. Confessing the truth and refusing to cooperate with evil may cost you, but God honors obedience and faithfulness. Yes, God honors obedience and faithfulness. We have learned that uh, overcoming spiritual oppression. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. The armor of God protects believers against spiritual attacks. You can overcome spiritual challenges by standing firm in God's word, prayer, and righteousness. Yes. And there's encouragement for your journey, my brother. Uh, Psalms chapter 9, 91, verse 2 to 3. I will say of the Lord, He is my refugee and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely, Ye will save you from the fallen snare. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. God is protect is your protector and healer. Continue sharing testimony to one others and trust him to restore what was lost in his perfect time. Let me know if you need help incorporating uh, this into your uh, full story, my brother. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. This is the world we are living in, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to enter the festive season. A lot will happen. We are going to travel to see our relatives. We are going to meet new people. Let's pray before traveling. Let's pray for this festive season. We are going to meet a lot of people. Before traveling, before meeting new people, you are going to family gatherings. You don't know what some of your, your, your relatives are planning against you. Yes, there might be some of them who are planning against you. You need to pray for that. At family gatherings, usually people will be relaxing. Sometimes uh, they will they'll forget about their kids. They'll just leave kids playing around with uh, kids of other relatives and sometimes one child will end up missing the devil is just waiting for us to relax so we need to pray anytime every time every time every time we need to pray there's no time to relax Ah, today, today is a holiday. Today is Christmas. Today, uh, don't forget to pray. When you wake up in the morning, pray. Say, God, thank you for this new day. Midday, pray. Lord, thank you for this ongoing day. 
before sleeping, pray, Lord, lead me into the next day. If you have the ability to set your alarm at 12 midnight, that's added advantage. Yes. Let's teach our children to pray. They should be afraid to start their days without praying. It's us who have the chance to build a better tomorrow. Let's build a great foundation for tomorrow. Building a great foundation for tomorrow is teaching the young ones to know the word of God. Let's know the Bible. Let's know the scriptures so that we, when we go to, to those fake churches, they won't cry to you. Let's learn to pray on our own, to fast. May God bless you. Thank you so listeners. Thank you so much, listeners, for tuning in and to meet again in other episodes. Bye for now.